Hi everyone. In this video, we will explore the analysis and design processes for composite beams and slabs with Protostructure 2024. We have explored the general principles of modeling composite beams and slabs in the previous video. As you might remember, we entered this loading information utilizing this window. Or, you can simply use the load editor for this purpose. The load editor is under the loading tab of ribbon menu, and it allows you to manage all the loads for the selected story. Here, we see the distributed loads now. These are the self-weight loads distributed over the beams. Once you turned off those, now you can see the loads distributed over the slabs. By changing the load case through this drop-down menu, you can check the live loads as well. Well, here we can see the details of each member on this story. Let's check the information about the frame members provided here. These are the beams defined as frame members, and here we can see the member code and the loads acting this member. For example, on this beam, there are the self-weight load of slab and the loads that we defined for construction and composite phases separately. Let's click OK and move on with the building analysis. We go to the Analysis tab of the ribbon menu, select Building Analysis and we start the analysis. The procedure followed by the protostructure during the building analysis can be described as follows. First of all, the building analysis is performed for two stages. The initial stage is Construction Phase. The Construction Phase analysis considers the state before the concrete hardens. Since the composite action on the beams has not occurred yet, the hot rolled profile sections are used in the construction stage analysis and design. The loads on the members include construction loads and machinery, the weights of beams and the steel bars, and the weight of the concrete without the metal deck. During this construction phase analysis, the finite elements floor analysis is performed automatically considering these vertical loads. The second phase of the building analysis is called composite stage, and during this phase of the analysis, the hardening process of the concrete has ended. The loads considered in this phase include the weight of composite slab with the hardened concrete, the weights of steel beams, live loads, and snow loads. During the composite phase of the analysis, the section properties of the composite section consisting of both the concrete and the steel bars. Here we have the summary report. This is important because before proceeding with the design, you should read this report and make the necessary adjustments based on the warnings given here, and repeat the analysis. For example, here it says that the building analysis must be repeated with an increased stiffness in direction 1. For this video now, we will click OK and move on with the design process. As you can see here, the finite element floor analysis has been performed during the building analysis automatically. Now, in order to design our composite slab system, we go to the Design tab and choose Composite Beams in the Steel Members section. On this table, only the members with the member type of composite beam are listed. We can use filtering tools to organize this list based on our preferences. For example, we can list these members based on their types only. Or, we can filter them based on stories. Also, we can sort the items on the list. Here, we see the primary and secondary composite beams grouped separately. We have two primary composite beams, and they are the ones we inserted here in our model. We can design these members one by one through this window. Also, we can select and design multiple members at once by holding control button during the selection process. Or, by utilizing check all command, we can design all the members listed here at once. Once we complete the design, we can check the design status of the members in this column. Also in this table, we can see the number of shear studs, the stud layout and the composite degree for each composite beam. When you double-click on any of the composite beam here, we can see the design properties of that composite beam. Here, the design status and the design properties are given for both the construction stage and the composite stage. Also, you can check the design of this member through this menu as well. Right next to this button, we have another command which can be utilized for changing the section under the same loading. For example, 
When we want to change this IPE200 section, we can utilize this command and select another section type from our extensive library. When we click OK, the design gets updated automatically, and as you can see for the IPE160 section, the serviceability and detailing checks are marked as failed. Hence, let's change the section again and select the previous section. If you want, you can click Cancel and neglect these changes. Additionally, we can check the design diagrams and obtain the detailed design report. On the right hand side, we have the design information. First, we have the camber. If needed, you can change this percentage and check the design here. Also, here we see the design load combination. Again, you can change this and update the design. We see the number of studs per row and the stud layout. On this dynamic view, we can instantly check the changes we make on the design. Here we have the target composite degree. In the first video, we showed that we can define this degree at the very beginning, and we mentioned the tolerance value between the composite degrees used in building analysis and design. This composite degree value we have right here is the composite degree considered in the design process. When we change this target composite degree and hit enter, the design gets updated immediately. However, if we enter a target composite degree which leads to the tolerance value getting exceeded, then as you can see that the analysis design composite degree check fails because we set the tolerance value as 10%. Hence, if we want to utilize a target composite degree exceeding our tolerance limit, then we should change the tolerance value through the settings center and repeat the building analysis. Under the Design Report tab, we have the Composite Bean Design Report showing the design calculations and the corresponding conditions given in the design code in detail. On the left hand side, we have the notifications. To see the related part of the report to any of these, you can simply double click and check the details of that notification. Overall, on this report, we see the notations used in the following parts of the report. Steel section properties. Composite properties. Loads considered in both construction and composite slab stages. In the following section, we see the design check for the construction stage and composite stage. Also, we can check the calculations for the shear studs as well. The calculation in this section gets updated automatically as we change the values in the right hand side. For example, we see that there are 20 shear studs in this design. The spacing between adjacent studs is 65.5 cm, and the number of studs per row is 2. Let's make a change here. When we change the number of studs per row as 1, you can see that the report gets updated automatically. Additionally, the deflection checks are done for both the construction and the composite stage. As it can be seen here, for each check, the corresponding clause of the design code is given. In the Parameters tab, we can manually adjust the parameters considered in the buckling and deflection computations. Let's go back to the design window now. We will check the design report generated for a member with a failed section design now. Here, we see that the sections failed in the serviceability and bending checks. When we check the summary design report to see the details, we see the failed checks given in the notifications part. We check the details quickly by double-clicking the notification. Here we see that the section fails due to bending moment. By looking at this report, we see that we can fix this by making necessary adjustments in buckling length, material properties, or the section type. Let's change the section under the existing loading conditions. We select the IPE240 section instead of IPE200 and click OK to update the design. As it can be seen that the design is updated instantly, and there is no failure right now. Let's check the bending check part. It satisfies the design conditions now. If you don't want to change the section, 
then you can utilize the Parameters tab and manually define the buckling parameters. However, let's keep the IPE240 section and click OK now. In this case, Protostructure warns you that the building analysis and finite element floor analysis should be repeated since the section is changed. Here on this table, the section of this beam has been changed as IPE240. Also, the design status is updated. The orange color here tells that the design is done with the internal loads considered before performing the building analysis. Let's close this window and repeat the building analysis. When we check the design status after the analysis and check all the members again, we can see that the beam with the IPE240 section now satisfies the design conditions. We can design the steel beams not defined as composite beams by utilizing this command. The beams listed here are not defined as composite beams so they are designed as steel frame members. For these members, we should check the design as well. This window is the same as the one for composite beams so we can see the details of the failed designs by simply checking the detailed design report. When we want to design the members in our model grouped based on their member types, we can utilize the steel section of this menu. We can also check the design of each member by simply selecting the member and utilizing the steel member design command in the right-click menu. The member we select is a composite member, the composite member design window launches. During the modeling process or after the design process, we may want to change sections of multiple members. In that case, we can hide the composite slab from the vertical menu and select the members that we want to change pressing the control key. Then, in the right-click menu, we can utilize the Edit Section Material command. After completing the modeling and design processes, we export our model to the protosteel for the steel detailing process. With this video, we have summarized the modeling, analysis and design of composite beams and slabs. Thank you for watching. In order to keep exploring the all-in-one structural engineering software, ProtoStructure Suite, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out our playlists.